the approval rating for Congress is still in record low territory. Just 13% in the middle of July, which was the last time Gallup checked, and that was right before lawmakers left Washington for a full seven weeks, its longest summer break in more than three decades. All that time with the lights dimmed at the Capitol probably won't do too much to boost the congressional reputation, which is so poor in large part because the public views Congress as not getting hardly anything done. The break might not do them more public relations harm either, because the 2016 presidential campaign is more than filling the void with its exceptionally toxic blend of polarizing partisanship. But either way, House members and senators are going to have to endure another round of ridicule about taking another long vacation. To be fair, that's not really fair. Up on the Hill, they call it the August recess. But it's not like the lawmakers are all running around outside playing four square or hanging out aimlessly by the water fountain. In fact, few if any lawmakers are spending all their time through Labor Day on the beach or by the lake or at the golf course. Most will take some personal time with their families, just like almost every full-time American worker hopes to do sometime during the summer. But most of them will spend more time than that doing things that are part of their jobs. Some of that is studying deeply about both domestic and foreign policies that are on the legislative agenda, which is something that you might hope your lawmaker would want to do. And yes, sometimes that means traveling abroad, either on the taxpayer dime or on trips paid for by outside groups, but sanctioned by Congress. For example, Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi and seven other House Democrats went to Italy to learn more about NATO and the refugee crisis. There are bipartisan congressional delegations headed to London to study ISIS along with global trade, and to Israel to explore the state of the Middle East. So-called codels to Afghanistan and Guantanamo Bay were also being planned. Rules put in place a decade ago really have reduced the ability to describe these trips as junkets. Closer to home, dozens of lawmakers will visit federal facilities, hospitals, and other big-time employers in their districts or states. They'll arrange town hall meetings where voters can ask them tough questions, or office hours where their constituents can get some private face time. And of course, they'll spend plenty of time on politics. Dozens of them started the recess at one of the national conventions, and Given the upheaval in both parties, this year especially, they really were more work than play. Nine senators and about 100 House members have their re-election primaries in 13 states in August. And even members who were safe bets to win in November will spend part of the month raising campaign cash. All in all, members of Congress keep plenty busy during every so-called recess. And there's actually data to back this up. A couple of years ago, the Congressional Management Foundation and the Society for Human Resources Management surveyed members about how they spend their time using anonymous interviews and reviewing their actual schedules. The bottom line? They work 70 hours a week when they're in Washington, but also 59 hours when they're back home, divided this way. In the end, not much of a recess. 